It's weekly weird news. <laughs> and since we took last week off, we've got double the weird news to dig through today. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, uh, we've now had some time to actually read through that new Trump indictment that we talked about on our previous episode. And oh boy. Yeah. I mean, we figured that everything juicy about this case had kind of already been covered. But thank God we were wrong. Mm -hmm. It's maybe the funniest legal document we've ever read. And we've read a lot of them. Yes. And we will get to all of that in just a moment. But first, we need to talk about some even more important news than that. Um, the orcas are still at it, folks. Uh, yes! The war between killer whales and boats has claimed yet another victim on the boat side, of course. Uh, here's the independent. I'm Let's so fucking excited. go. A sailor has told how his yacht was thrown around like a ragdoll yes. by killer <laughs> whales near Gibraltar in the latest in a growing number of orca attacks on boats. Ian Hamilton, 60, said he was left marooned for a few days after a pod of five whales attacked his boat, the Beauty of Clyde, while he was sailing 20 miles off the coast of the British territory. Not so beautiful anymore, mm -hmm. is it? He said his boat was wrecked by the mammals as they tore off its rudders. Quote, I noticed a fin, then noticed a light bump, and then a very big bump, and looked round, and there was a very large whale pushing along the back and trying to bite the rudder, he told BBC Radio 4. To begin with, there was one big whale and four smaller whales, and they were just bumping it and bumping it, and then one of them managed to take off one of the rudders. The boat has two. Then we lost the second rudder, so we had no mechanism of steering the boat, and the whales were in charge of the boat. <laughs> and they pushed us around like a ragdoll, he added. I am the, the captain now. Yes, you go where I say you go. Yeah, if, if we gave them hands, which we should, yes. they would, they'd do one of these. The, the, the whales are in charge. It's so cool because... <laughs> Right out of the gate, I'm like, at this point, I am inclined to believe that people are actively going to sail this area to claim that they had an orca attack. But no. Well, that's Both the beauty of it. gone. The beauty of it is uh, that doesn't even need to be the case because the distance between the tip of Gibraltar and North Africa is like, it's very narrow. Yeah. It's like fucking 25 miles or some shit. You have to go through there. They are patrolling this area. They've set up a Like some block. sort of coast guard. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, at this point, we've pretty much lost track of all the various orca victories in this war. Mm -hmm. But it definitely seems like they are getting a lot more bold about it lately. Yeah. And that's awesome. Uh, there were 20 separate orca incidents in this area in just the month of May. And keep in mind, uh, the area where this is all happening is home to only around 35 orcas total. Yeah. And it's believed that only around 15 of those 35 are the ones responsible for all these attacks. And that they were all taught to do this by one female orca named White Gladys, who <laughs> had a bad run-in with a boat a few years ago and has been seeking her revenge ever since. Yeah. Good for her. Mm -hmm. uh, orcas together, strong, clearly. And you, don't, <laughs> you don't even need a lot of them. They're no. big and they're pretty dangerous. You think we're dangerous now? Wait till we get the other 15 or 20. Like, uh, in terms of, like, the ratio of, like, dangerous, destructive capabilities and uh, never, ever... A recorded incident of actually like eating a human, like orcas, at the top of that. Yeah. Then and, and like yeah, they haven't killed anyone. They they have the moral high ground, I think, throughout all this. It's funny they've think, done nothing wrong. Thinking back, thanks to doing this show, I remember years for the weird things that happened. Uh, specifically, a few years back when it was the year of the weird, creepy clowns hiding in the yeah, woods. Yeah. And this no matter what happens in 2023, it will forever be in my mind as the year of the orca. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and thank God. So yeah, meanwhile, the human side of this war, they've been left with very few options. More rudders! Their hands are tied. I mean, orcas do kind of have the animal version of diplomatic immunity. Well, yeah. Well deserved after centuries of mm -hmm. being hunted. And yeah, apparently the only defense that they've come up with is um, sprinkling some sand in the water near the rudder to confuse the orca's sonar and also banging pots and pans. That's pretty much all they got so far. Um, and I don't know, it seems like these orcas, they show up mad. This seems like it would just make them more mad. If nothing else, they're learning to cope with the sand and the banging. Yeah, so good luck with that, sailors. You can uh, only make them it. stronger. I know. Yeah. But one person who'd probably happily trade their current predicament for being attacked by orcas is, of course, Donald J. Trump, who has found himself in even more legal trouble this week thanks to some federal criminal charges on top of the New York state criminal charges he was already facing. Now, that ongoing New York case is about hush money payments made to adult film actress Stormy Daniels, and this latest case is about an entirely different and much more serious scandal. 
the whole taking a bunch of highly classified documents home to Mar-a-Lago and then refusing to give them back when repeatedly asked, that's the thing we're talking about. And before we get to the good stuff in the actual indictment, here's the New York Times with a, a bit of an introduction. The 49-page indictment, containing 38 counts and seven separate charges, gave the clearest picture yet of the files that Mr. Trump took with him when he left the White House. It said he had illegally kept documents concerning United States nuclear programs, potential vulnerabilities of the United States and its allies to military attack, and plans for possible retaliation in response to a foreign attack. The unauthorized disclosure of these classified documents could put at risk the national security of the United States, foreign relations, the safety of the United States military, and human sources and the continued viability of sensitive intelligence collections methods, the indictment said. The indictment described Mr. Trump as willfully hanging on to documents that were called by some aides his papers. <laughs> it details how Mr. Trump suggested to one of his lawyers that it was possible to tell prosecutors that, quote, we don't have anything here after a grand jury subpoena had been issued for all remaining classified material in his possession. I don't want anybody looking through my boxes. I really don't. Mr. Trump also told the lawyer during that meeting, according to the indictment. Oh, these? These are just my papers. Uh, my papers. Please don't look through them. Yeah, uh, seems bad. And it doesn't seem like he can really plead ignorance here. No. And to drive home how ridiculous this situation was, here's a photo from the indictment showing how exactly these documents were stored at Trump's house slash resort. Yeah, that is a bathroom with a chandelier in it where anyone taking a shit could just reach out and grab a box of classified documents to rifle through for some, you know, just some toilet reading material. Or to use it in case you run out of toilet paper. Oh, good. We've got all these classified documents. I mean, that would be Hell the yeah. best case scenario. Yeah. Because then it's actually destroyed and flushed. Right. The worst case scenario is someone forgetting their phone and going in there to take a very long overdue deuce. Right. <laughs> well, I got a lot of time in here. Our friends from Saudi Arabia who just joined Mar-a-Lago, they're taking a long time in the bathroom. Weird cultural differences. Must they all go in together. Yeah. They all go in together and spend a lot of time in there. Well, we have to respect it. Yes. <laughs> There's nothing we can do. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, to be fair, he also kept a bunch of documents just sitting on stage in his resort's ballroom. And also this unsecured and very easily accessible storage room. Then there's this picture, taken by Trump's aide and alleged co-conspirator, Walt Nauda, from a time he went down to the storage room and found one box's contents spilled out on the floor with that little black redaction bar covering a top secret document intended for the Five Eyes International Intelligence Alliance. Yeah, and yeah, Five Eyes, it's U.S., Australia, Britain, New Zealand, Canada. I think that's it's it. It's certainly uh, not your eyes. Anyway, yeah, it's exactly. Uh, <laughs> and I imagine, like, we're, we're looking at this from an American perspective, and it's very funny and also alarming. Y equal. Yes. But, like... It's ridiculous. It's, it's, all, it's scary, but it's ridiculous. But this fucks up. Like, I got to imagine so many governments and state departments and intelligence agencies around the world are just like, Guess in what do we fucking do? Call back all of our fucking assets. It's fucked. Burn guess, everything. Guess at Mar-a-Lago reading these documents like they're reading the back of a Head and Shoulders bottle when they're sitting right. on the can. Mm -hmm. Just, Just pass the time. Eh. Oh, hey, cool. The queen's secretly still alive and lives in an underground bunker with a bunch of aliens? <laughs> yeah. Right. Nice. That's a great post. It's just like, yeah, guy car dealership sitting down in the Mar-a-Lago bathroom reading about how ALF is real and yeah. <laughs> was autopsied at Area 51. Mm -hmm. huh. huh. Interesting. So, yeah, let's read some fun selections from this indictment. It's, it, you know, it's 49 pages, but it, it goes... It just goes by so the quickly. The fastest book you'll ever read. Yeah, it's a page turner. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start with a transcript of a recorded interview yeah. that Trump gave in 2021 to a writer who was working on a book about him. Upon greeting the writer, publisher, and his two staff members, Trump stated, look what I found. This was the senior military official's plan of attack. Read it and just show it's interesting. Later in the interview, Trump engaged in the following exchange. Trump, well, with the senior military official, uh, let me see that. I'll show you an example. He said that I wanted to attack country A. Isn't it amazing? I have a big pile of papers. This thing just came up. Look, this was him. They presented me this. This is off the record, but they presented me this. This was him. This was the Defense Department and him. Wow. We looked at some. This was him. This wasn't done by me. This was him. All sorts of stuff. Pages long. Look. Mm. Wait a minute. Let's see here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just found. Isn't that amazing? This totally wins my case, you know? Mm-hmm. Except it is like 
highly confidential. Yeah. <laughs> secret. This is secret information. <laughs> look, look at this. You attack and... And yeah, and then I guess they cut out the part where he literally spills state secrets. That's not in the indictment. Yeah. But they jump ahead to this part. By the way, isn't that incredible? Yeah. I was just thinking because we were talking about it. And, you know, he said he wanted to attack country A. And what you did, this was done by the military and given to me. Uh, I think we could we could probably uh, right? I don't know. We'll we'll have to see. Yeah, yeah, we'll try to declassify it. Figure out a, yeah. See, as president, I could have declassified it. Yeah. <laughs> now I can't, you know, but this is still a secret. Yeah. <laughs> now we have a problem. Isn't that interesting? It's like uh, the way I'm going to show you some top secret documents, which I am not allowed to show you. But check this out. I could have declassified Pretty it. Pretty good, huh? I, I love that. It's like the defense of putting LOL at the end of everything to be like, well, I was just joking. Yeah. With the laughter going on, it's just like, oh, well, no, you know, the conversation wasn't serious, uh, obviously, because people were laughing. And it's clearly people who are nervous uh, yeah. being privy to the conversation. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, yeah, I love that he he's just talking. It's pretty much just him yeah, talking. Yeah, he's just rambling on. Yeah, the other people are like, uh-huh, yeah, cool. Uh -huh. And he's trying to impress someone. Yeah. Anyways. Very interesting. Very interesting. Especially the fact that none of the people Trump was showing this stuff to had security clearance for those documents. And the fact that the entire incident was recorded with Trump's full knowledge. Yeah, the reason they have a transcript is because there is an audio recording, which is now in the possession of the, the government. Um, it's the presidential version of here I am in Nancy Pelosi's office. Yeah. And OK, here's a similar scene from the indictment. In August or September 2021, when he was no longer president, Trump met in his office at the Bedminster Club with a representative of his political action committee, the PAC representative. During the meeting, Trump commented that an ongoing military operation in country B was not going well. Trump showed the PAC representative a classified map of country B and told the PAC representative that he should not be showing the map to PAC representative and not to get too close. The PAC representative did not have a security clearance or any need to know classified information about the military operation. I really shouldn't be showing you this. It's a crime, but I'm going to do it anyway. Pretty cool, huh? Also, I love the theory, and this might not be true. He probably, this it, this probably happened a lot of different times. Yes. But I like the theory that this specific case, the uh, PAC representative was none other than rock star Kid Rock. Because Kid Rock, uh, just off the cuff in some radio interview like a year ago, said... Described a scene pretty much exactly like the one described. Yes, I mean he's like, yeah, I shouldn't keep be showing. Yeah, he keeps showing me stuff that I'm not supposed to see. Yeah, uh, nationally televised. I believe that was with either Tucker or Hannity. The interview that oh, I can't God. remember. Uh, but yes, that, that's when he said he's like, yeah, show me all this stuff, and I'm like, <laughs> and then he asks my advice, and yeah. I'm like, I think this is uh, maybe I shouldn't be a part of this. So yeah, when that's... Kid Rock is the voice of reason in the room, you've you've really you've messed up, gone down the wrong path. Uh -huh. So yeah, those are the juiciest examples of Trump just straight up showing people classified documents while acknowledging out loud that he really shouldn't be doing that. Mm -hmm. But the case also deals with crimes related to the government repeatedly asking for those documents back and Trump obstructing those efforts. And the indictment breaks that down here, suggesting that his attorney falsely represent to the FBI and grand jury that Trump did not have documents called for by the grand jury subpoena, directing defendant Waltine Nauta to move boxes of documents to conceal them from Trump's attorney, the FBI and the grand jury suggesting that his attorneys hide or destroy documents called for by the grand jury subpoena, providing to the FBI and grand jury just some of the documents called for by the grand jury subpoena, while claiming that he was cooperating fully, and causing a certification to be submitted to the FBI and grand jury, falsely representing that all documents called for by the grand jury subpoena had been produced, while knowing that, in fact, not all such documents had been produced. Whew. Also, a, 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 a reported thing in one of those books that was written about his tenure as president uh, was that he would eat documents uh, in order to get rid of them. So maybe he ate some of these documents too. And maybe so he can shit it out. So, yes. Uh, so that, uh, you know, oops, can't find those ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did they check his kitchen cabinets? <laughs> Wait, this isn't a box of HelloFresh. <laughs> these are classified documents. We just put it in milk. Delicious. Yes. Uh, so the indictment also notes that between Trump leaving office and the August 2022 Mar-a-Lago raid, Mar-a-Lago hosted more than 150 social events that drew tens of thousands of guests. During this whole time, 
all these boxes of classified documents were just being shuffled around Mar-a-Lago by staffers and placed in areas that weren't exactly secure. And here's the description of the storage room. The hallway leading to the storage room could be reached from multiple outside entrances, including one accessible from the Mar-a-Lago Club pool patio through a doorway that was often kept open. The storage room was near the liquor supply closet, linen room, lock shop, and various other rooms. So yeah, you're like doing... You get lost and you stumble upon yeah, some Yeah, you're working even. some event at Mar-a-Lago as like the bartender and like, oh, we need another bottle of Captain Morgan. And you go down and you're just like grabbing a bottle like next to a giant pile of highly classified documents. Yes. Or, or you're at the pool and you can't find the bathroom. You're like, oh, is it maybe down this way? What's in these boxes? Someone has probably drunkenly pissed on these documents. Yeah. I mean, that would be a good thing. And in a much more serious and probably likely way, after he left the White House, it was probably in a lot of country with ulterior motives interest to uh, make themselves available at Mar-a-Lago frequently. Oh, yeah. Especially I mean, when they know how big of a doofus this guy is. And probably were like, he'll just say things. Yeah. And then imagine Worth finding, the shot. finding the documents and being like, whoa. Whoa. Yeah. But yeah, while there's still no allegations here that Trump specifically like sold classified secrets to our enemies or anything like that, at least not intentionally, yeah. it sounds like it would have been very easy for any of Mar-a-Lago's staffers or its tens of thousands of guests to do that if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. It was just there. Yes. It's honestly hilarious that Trump violated every rule in the book when it comes to classified government documents and seemingly didn't even do it for particularly nefarious purposes. He just did it seemingly out of spite and also because he's kind of a hoarder and also so that he could show the documents to random people to seem cool. That seems to be what he was doing. It's really not that different from that National Guard guy who got caught sharing classified info with teenagers on Discord. Like... He broke the law. He did what spies usually do, but seemed to have done it just to like impress. For clout. Yeah, for clout. Yeah. Trump stole these documents for clout. Mm -hmm. But yeah, in any case, it's all still highly illegal, regardless of your motives. And the indictment devotes a very fun section to simply quoting Trump's own words over the years about what should be done about someone who mishandles classified information. As a candidate for president of the United States, Trump made the following public statements, among others, about classified information. On August 18, 2016, Trump stated, In my administration, I'm going to enforce all laws concerning the protection of classified information. No one will be above the law. <laughs> On September 6, 2016, Trump stated, We also need to fight this battle by collecting intelligence and then protecting, protecting our classified secrets. We can't have someone in the Oval Office who doesn't understand the meaning of the word confidential or classified. <laughs> Whew. Uh, on September 7th, 2016, Trump stated, One of the first things we must do is to enforce all classification rules and to enforce all laws relating to the handling of classified information. On September 19th, 2016, Trump stated, We also need the best protection of classified information. On November 3rd, 2016, Trump stated, Service members here in North Carolina have risked their lives to acquire classified intelligence to protect our country. Yeah, I mean... They, That's a two-month span. Basically. They put this in there to demonstrate that he knew this was wrong, but I, I'd like to think they also put this in there just to own him a little bit. Yes. Yes. Receipts. This you? Mm-hmm. It's okay when I do it. So, yeah, that's the case against Trump, and, uh, yeah, seems bad. <laughs> but also, this country has a long history of letting rich and powerful people off with a slap on the wrist, so I don't know. Who the hell knows? We let presidents especially get away with a lot here. But yeah, this is all pretty unprecedented. We still absolutely would not bet on Trump serving 20 years in prison like he's facing. Really, any present time would be legitimately shocking. But this case is at least bad enough for Trump that within hours of the indictment, uh, two of Trump's lawyers on this case quit his defense team. Just like, well, I'm out. Yeah, bye. Um, so yeah, this is all very exciting stuff. Wait, but the the one thing was that apparently the first person put in charge of this case was a Trump appointee. Yeah. Which is concerning. Um, but. The judge, yeah. Yeah. Just, just incredible. He appointed a lot of judges. Unprecedented, crazy stuff. And I think it's, it's actually beneficial to the American public that all of this information came out as quickly as it did. Because even having a weekend between the indictment oh, and him yeah. showing up on Tuesday is enough time to 
just muddy the waters all over the place. So this was actually very necessary to have all this information come out because yeah. otherwise you're allowing the narrative to be completely controlled by right. Fox, the other right wing stuff, and Trump I mean, himself. Even on Fox, uh, Steve Ducey got into like butting heads with his uh, Fox and Friends co host because he's just like, yeah, guys, guys, this is guys, pretty this bad. Is bad. And yeah. Brian Kilmeade's like, oh, I don't know, it might all just be lies. Like, this is all, it might all just be based on lies. And he's just like, ah. <laughs> and then Greg Gutfield was like, it's okay when a hot teacher does it to a kid. Yeah, that guy's, that guy's a weirdo. Weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's like, this. Everything Trump's accused of here would like get you life in prison if you were a, any a member of the military at like any rank. Really. Yeah, like this is pretty fucking serious. But I guess we'll see what happens. He's also got that Georgia case that's still in the works. The man's got a lot of legal problems, and, and it's very exciting timing. His case with E. Jean Carroll has been amended because of the comments, or it's trying to be amended because uh, of the comments that he made during the town hall. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Ongoing, developing story here. Very exciting stuff. But it's time to move on now to our next story. And, oh, God, it's another Trump story. Yeah. But it's one that we missed while we were away. Mm -hmm. It also doesn't really have anything to do with Trump himself, but rather his hardcore fan base and how easy it is to grift off of them. They're the perfect marks. Yeah. Fish in a barrel. Here's NBC News. In the recesses of the internet where some of Donald Trump's most fervent supporters stoke conspiracies and plot his return to the White House, suspected con artists have been mining their disappointment over the last presidential election for gold. They've been peddling Trump bucks, which are emblazoned with photos of the former president and advertising them online as a kind of golden ticket that will help propel Trump's 2024 bid and make the real patriots who support him rich when cashed in. John, a man, told NBC News he bought $2,200 worth of Trump bucks and other items over the past year only to discover that they were worthless when he tried to cash them in at his <laughs> local bank. <laughs> he deserved it. So he's gone on Twitter to warn other Trump supporters not to fall for this scam. I know it seems very believable, but trust me, guys. Uh, NBC News has identified the Colorado-based companies behind the Trump bucks as Patriots Dynasty, Patriots Future, and USA Patriots. <laughs> and reviewed dozens of social posts, online complaints, and hundreds of misleading ads for the products. Additionally, NBC News has found at least a dozen people like Aman who say they invested thousands of dollars after watching the pitches on Telegram and other websites that strongly suggested that Trump himself was endorsing these products. Now I'm questioning whether he's aware of this, Aman said of Trump. I'm thinking Trump might not know about this, because... Uh... What do you mean my Trump bucks aren't worth anything? After I took this fake money to the bank and they told me to kick rocks, I'm starting to question whether this might have been a scam. Uh, Trump uh, might not be, might not even know that people are using his name to do this. This is only so made funnier by the idea that going online to complain about a Trump product about that, like you'd get other supporters being like, don't listen to this guy. Yeah. He obviously hates the president. Yeah, he's just a, a rhino. Mm-hmm. So yes, you heard that right. A bunch of Trump fans got duped into buying fake money with Trump's face on it under the impression that it was real legal tender. Mm -hmm. And selling boomers worthless commemorative coins has been a lucrative business for a very long time. But tricking them into actually believing that it's real money that they can spend takes it to the next level. Uh, from the article again, since 2020, when Joe Biden defeated Trump in the presidential election, internet hucksters have been selling pro-Trump products like coins, checks, and cards, and marketing them as novelty items. The fine print on the websites offering these items usually notes that they are memorabilia. But on social media and in promotional videos, many featuring faked celebrity endorsements, the sellers have tapped an audience that believes Trump's ouster was part of a great conspiracy and that by investing in the Trump rebate banking system, <laughs> or TRB for short, Trump will reward their loyalty by making them rich. Those who buy these items, the ads from Patriots Dynasty, Patriots Future, and USA Patriots suggest, will be rewarded when Trump unveils a new monetary system that will turn these products into legal tender worth far more than the purchase price. I got... It's a, the Iraqi dinar I was just going to say, I got a closet full of Trump bucks, uh, Iraqi dinar... And all kinds and, and all kinds of uh, yeah. shit coins. But like it's all been, of my Doge coins. It's been pointed out that like at least the Iraqi dinar was at one point a real currency. This is just funny money. Yeah, this is this monopoly is money. <laughs> These are Chester tokens. Yes, you've uh, bought sheets of paper with absolutely zero value. In fact, they're worth less than you paid for them. Yeah, uh, 
I mean, and I looked at the prices of these, like, oh, God. Like, these things cost, you know, less than a dollar to make, and people are spending hundreds. Oh, it's fucked up. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I feel, I don't, I don't feel bad for the people that wasted their money on this, but it's just like, how fucking gullible can you be? Yeah. Yeah, oh, Trump is going to, uh, Trump is going to literally abolish the U.S. dollar and replace it with Trump bucks. And you're going to want to get in on this soon. Also, the only place you're hearing about this is fucking like Telegram because, um, well, reasons. The Trump buck is inflation proof. That's right. Yeah. And yeah, if you're the most credulous rube in the world, this was a hell of a deal. Spending just $100 gets you a $10,000 diamond Trump bucks bill that will be obviously redeemable at places like Walmart and Home Depot and can be deposited at banks like Wells Fargo and Bank of America. And those are amazing returns. Yeah, incredible. And this is definitely legit and shown by these very legit looking websites. Yeah, that's real. And for anyone who's still skeptical, look at these very real endorsements from figures like Elon Musk and Donald Trump himself. N need to know this. That troop certificate is not a joke, it's real, and everyone need to get as many as they can. I spend $1 million on troop certificates, and this week I'm going to cash out my troop items. Soon I will be the richest person on the planet again. I'm glad to be invited to speak about the TRB membership handbook here on Fox News. Yes, the rumors are true. We finally launched the TRB membership handbook, and it's 100% functioning. It was a long and hard-working process to make the TRB system function properly, but I would do anything for my loyal supporters. The TRB Handbook is the only certified way to invest in your future. My stamp, signature, and the latest UV Mark technology can guarantee its authenticity. I encourage all true patriots to invest their future and to get as many TRB membership handbooks as they can. Let's make America wealthy again. God bless you. Okay, so yeah, obviously a scam. But scam artists are really good at picking their targets, and it's made even easier by the multiple social media networks that allow specific targeting. Mm -hmm. They're not going to waste time going after people who aren't easily duped. That would be stupid. They go after the type of people most likely to fall for scams, and Trump's MAGA fan base are the perfect marks. And here is one mark in particular. One 75-year-old Alabama grandmother who consented to having her picture taken but asked not to be identified by name for fear of internet harassment told NBC News the message she got from watching the pitches on the internet was that Trump was going to make her rich. But the grandmother, who describes herself as a real patriot, said what she got for the $1,500 she invested in Trump bucks turned out to be fool's gold. I saw all these ads on Telegram that had Trump pushing coins and checks that he endorsed and how you can cash them in after a year and make a profit, the grandmother who lives in Mobile told NBC News. I was told how you can go to Bank of America or Target or Amazon to cash them in. About six months ago, the grandmother said, she gathered up the Trump bucks and commemorative coins she had purchased and drove 60 miles east to the nearest Bank of America branch she could find in Pensacola, Florida. There, she said, she was greeted by a teller who told her she'd been scammed. When we get there, the lady tells me she's seen dozens of people coming in to cash these checks and they have nothing to do with this, the grandmother said. I hate, I hate presuming, but I'm going to presume that this, anyone trying to turn these in that got turned away by the tellers, the tellers probably got yelled at for a little while before. Oh, yeah. You don't understand. You idiot. Don't you know? Don't yeah. you know about the TRB? Yeah. Let me talk to your manager. So, yes, this is actually kind of sad. The people being ripped off seem to be older people who really should not be spending that kind of money on bullshit. In another example in the article, they describe a Florida woman trying and failing to get her mother-in-law to see that she's getting scammed. To prove to her mother-in-law that she had been swindled, the Florida woman said she drove her to a nearby bank and urged her to try to redeem the Trump bucks in her possession. We thought she got it. She even admitted she got scammed, the Florida woman said. But then giant boxes arrived at the house full of Trump checks and other stuff that she bought for $500 and that would supposedly be worth $6 million one day. We tell her she's getting scammed and she says, just wait, Trump will make all the patriots rich. It's like she's in a cult, the Florida woman said. Yeah. So I literally went to the bank. They're like, this is bullshit. This is a scam. We see this all the time. That's like, exactly what someone who doesn't like okay. investing money in surefire deals I've learned say. my lesson and just goes home and like orders more fucking bullshit. Yeah. Um, Fuck. At this point, well, not even at this point, years ago, any product, any marketing towards patriots 
is a scam. I, yeah. I can't think of anything that would be marketed towards patriots currently that wouldn't be some kind of scam. And the funniest thing about this shit is um, you can collect actual legal tender. and It's, it's a, a fun hobby. It's a fun hobby. Yeah. My dad was really into it for a long time, and I have a few, like, 150-year-old, like, coins and, and the, detective cases. And it's like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, and it's it's fun to, you know, you get some coins, you bring out the old monocular, you take a look at it, and you say, well, look, it has that little stamp on it. That might be worth something. And then yeah. you do some... Re- it's a good time waster. It's, it's a way nice better, hobby. Yeah, it's a conversation starter. Way better than classified documents. Yes. You say, hey, check that out. Pretty cool. Or stamps. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a real hobby in here somewhere, but these people are being duped by buying worthless garbage. Yeah. Uh-huh. Anyway... Back to that Alabama grandma, the first one. The Alabama grandmother says she was initially fooled by the AI version of Trump she saw in the ads. She trusted Trump's supposed business acumen and thought this was a good investment to have something to leave behind for her children. Now I realize, well, that was stupid, she said. But I bought them because I believed President Trump, because he knows all about finance and he was going to help the real Trump patriots get rich. So yeah, we've repeatedly talked about how everyone really, really needs to sit down their older relatives and explain just basic shit to them about stuff like phone scams. Just don't answer the phone. The bank is never going to They're not going to... If, uh, if they're Trump people or MAGA people or suffering from mul- any any number of yeah, old person disease, uh, they're not going to listen to you right. because they don't like being told what to do. Yeah, they, I mean, these people, they exist kind of in their own fucking parallel yes. reality. In, in a lot fact, of ways, they so. will probably dig in harder because yeah. you're telling them not to fall for this stuff. So, yeah, I mean, clearly, if someone's not only old and gullible, but also deep down the MAGA rabbit hole, uh, you need to be extra, extra vigilant. They're, they're probably just going to tell you to fuck off. But like, I don't know. Yeah, there's... I don't know what to do. Like, clearly, even taking them down to the bank and being, see, look, that doesn't. 100% work, so... I, I don't know. Jesus. It is a, a it, it is a already happening and will continue to happen. Sad state of affairs we where... We need parental controls for, like, old yeah. people's phones. But uh, there was... <laughs> it was like a sub stack or something that I was reading about how someone, uh, upon their MAGA parents passing away, uh, came to realize they had left them nothing but Trumpy bears, yeah. my pillows, and a TV with the Fox News logo burned into the corner. Yeah, just a bunch of fucking kitschy just bullshit. Just literally rotted their brain their final years and died the person that they don't even remember growing up with. Yeah. Um, and it's really like heartbreaking. I, I make fun of, uh, you know, the, the nerds who spend tons of money on, like, sideshow collect- collectibles and Funkos, but it's like, at least those things have kind of inherent value where it's like it's something you actually like uh, well they actually like the Trump stuff it's I mean just, I, yeah but it's still different it's like at least you could uh, probably get like a hundred bucks for a sideshow collectible that someone yeah, spent a thousand dollars no this on. shit any of this shit these people are buying it's just getting melted down if it's metal and if it's not metal it's no one it's going in the garbage yeah it's um, it's very sad very sad sad But moving on now to the latest update in our years-long saga covering Jacob Wool and Jack Berkman, the world's most incompetent and least law-abiding political operatives. Uh, Things have been relatively quiet for the past couple years, ever since these dimwits finally started facing justice. They bit off more than they could chew. They flew too close to the sun. Mm -hmm. Uh, Specifically, they did a bunch of illegal robocalls in the lead-up to the 2020 election, which contained election disinformation intended to suppress black voter turnout. Which is a crime. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we have an update on how that's all going. Here's NBC News. The Federal Communications Commission announced this week that it will serve a $5.1 million fine against conservative (laughs) activists Jack Berkman and Jacob Wall and J.M. Berkman and Associates over their role in making 1,141 unlawful robocalls before the 2020 election. Yes. The FCC said the robocalls were made from August 26th to September 14th, 2020 in New York, Ohio, Michigan, and other states, according to state prosecutors, who said the scheme was an attempt to suppress the black vote in the run-up to the presidential election. The calls identified Berkman and Wall, and they told potential voters that if they voted by mail, their personal information will be part of a public database that will be used by police departments to track down old warrants and be used by credit card companies to collect outstanding debts. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, we got them. 
Bake them away, toys. I mean, listen, yeah, both these men absolutely belong in prison, not just for this, but for everything, all the shenanigans over the years. But um, getting fined $5.1 million by the federal government, uh, the largest ever fine they've given for this particular charge, that is a good consolation prize. Yeah. I will take it. I'm and, somewhat uh, satisfied. Yeah, especially since it was starting to kind of look like they might get away with this robocall thing with a slap on the wrist. Uh, I can't remember which jurisdiction they also got charged in, but it was like, a couple thousand dollars fine and like some community service. I love being um, surprised by things by things like this. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Meanwhile, they are still also facing criminal prosecution for this in the state of Michigan that could potentially land them behind bars. Though that case seems to be stalled by a very slow-moving appeals process. For now, Jacob Wool and Jack Berkman are fucked, and they stand to be even more fucked depending on how things go in Michigan. So things are good. Yeah, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Now, speaking of conservatives facing justice, one of the weirdest things to come out of the January 6th Capitol riots was a few months later when the FBI started posting photos of unidentified suspects to social media. And the guy in one of those posts sure seemed to, at least to a lot of people, resemble comedic actor Jay Johnston of Mr. Show and Bob's Burgers fame, among many other popular roles. Yeah, quite a filmography. And, well, it wasn't long before multiple figures in the comedy world came out and said that, yeah, that actually was definitely Jay Johnson. And this is very disappointing, of course, and very confusing, but okay, come on. How, how much trouble did Jay Johnston get into on January 6th? Come on. He's a comedian. How bad could it what be? What could he have possibly done? Doing some voices in the crowd? Keeping <laughs> people's spirits up? Yeah, he's there to entertain everyone. Well, uh, here's the AP. Video footage captured Johnston pushing against police and helping rioters who attacked officers guarding an entrance to the Capitol in a tunnel on the Lower West Terrace, according to an FBI agent's affidavit. Johnston held a stolen police shield over his head and passed it to other rioters during the attack on January 6, 2021, the affidavit says. Johnston was close to the entrance of the tunnel, turned back, and signaled for other rioters to come towards the entrance, the agent wrote. While the mob attacked police in the tunnel with pepper spray and other weapons, Johnston helped other rioters near the tunnel pour water on their faces and then joined in pushing against the line of officers, the FBI says. Okay, so Jay Johnston was, in fact, participating in a bit of insurrection. He was in it. He was in that crowd. And he was finally arrested this week, more than two years after that tweet, and has been charged with one felony for obstructing officers during civil disorder and several misdemeanor charges, including unlawful entry on a restricted building. So... Anyway, this certainly adds a new and very weird element to a lot of our favorite comedy TV shows. But thankfully, Mr. Show is so good that even knowing one of its cast members participated in January 6th, it barely takes away from how enjoyable it is. Yeah, I mean, uh, I haven't haven't done a rewatch since learning this information, but uh, he's great in it. I'm very confused. I'd like to know more. Like, what the... F I, I've met this man also. Like, mm -hmm. my wife uh, worked on a show... One of the many shows he was in, and he was at like a screening party for it. He seemed like a nice guy. So this is all very weird. I always go back to the the first couple months of COVID when uh, you could there was a visible because of Facebook and Twitter posting a visible descent into madness. Yeah, so that where you could see the brain rot happening live, and it, it had to be like this kind of same thing. Yeah, it's uh, it's all very weird because like he was all. I mean, he was involved in the the reboot, the Netflix uh, with Bob and David show. Mm -hmm. That was 2015. So like, it was like right before. It doesn't mean the he didn't have like conservative mind. ideals then. Right, and, and that's, also that's, you know, there's a difference it's between being fine. I, you know, I, I yeah, don't agree with it, but it's whatever. fine. If yeah. he's conservative, I don't fucking care. Yeah, he's making good TV. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference between that and going to flying to the Capitol, and they, of course, have, like, receipts for that. Like, yeah, yeah it's definitely him. Flying to the fucking Capitol specifically to, like, riot uh, and uh, try to kill Mike Pence. Yes. So, um, yeah, I I hope we learn more about his deal because, um, yeah, this one hurt a little bit. <laughs> I don't give a shit, but it, I, I, mean, I, do, I am interested yeah. to see, you know, peel back the layers and see exactly yeah. what went on here. yeah. Yeah. Because it'll be a nice case study for everyone else. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anyway, just one more story before we get to the headlines. And this one, thankfully, has nothing to do with politics. This is some classic Weekly Weird News material here. In fact, we probably covered the story when it first was reported way back in 2018. But we don't remember. So let's just read now from NBC News about a crime that, while definitely not, not a cool crime, uh, does have elements of a cool crime. Sure. Some elements. 
And the backstory here is that a guy named Gregory Rodvelt got arrested in 2017 with a bunch of bombs oh, on geez. him. Uh, so the FBI decided to go and check on the house that he previously lived in but had just lost in a lawsuit mm -hmm. to see, I don't know, maybe there's some bombs there too. When bomb specialists got to the man's former property in Williams, about 30 miles west of Medford, on September 7th, 2018, they came upon a minivan blocking the front gates and, upon closer inspection, saw it was rigged with two booby traps, according to the affidavit. They disarmed the traps and got to the home's front, where they spotted a hot tub tilted at an <laughs> angle, authorities said. When FBI agents reached him in Arizona, Rodvelt stated that he set up a fishing line and a trip wire across the property gate that went to a round hot tub that was on its side, set to roll down the hill and hit whoever comes through the gate, Gray wrote. Uh, it continues. Rodvelt described it by referencing the stone rolling down in the Indiana Jones movie. <laughs> Rodvelt also talked of other trip wires on the property and a spike strip made of nails and wood, which was designed to flatten tires. Rodvelt did not provide additional specifics about the trip wires. To enter the house, based upon the presence of the aforementioned booby traps, law enforcement officers used an explosive charge to breach the front door, the affidavit says. Once they got inside, they came upon a wheelchair, and after it was bumped, it triggered a homemade shotgun device that discharged a 4 410 shotgun shell that struck the FBI bomb technician below the knee, the U.S. Attorney's Office said. Jeez. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that. Don't touch the wheel. Oh. Calling back. Yeah. He could have made this sound a lot more zany if he had just referenced Home Alone instead of Indiana Jones. Yeah. yeah. Also, I don't remember that trap from Indiana Jones. <laughs> when it blew the guy's knees off? Like the bathtub, like the gun trap, that's like, that's lethal or potentially lethal. Uh, the bathtub, like, I would have loved to see how that actually worked because uh, the thing about the Indiana Jones is like it's a ball and balls roll. Well, it was, on, uh, it was sideways. Yeah, so I guess, but it's, it's not going to get the same kind of momentum if it's a bathtub rolling. Yeah. In, in fact, it might not even make it all the way down, depending on how steep this It is. falls over or has way too much time for everyone to yeah, react. Yeah, I think you'd probably hey, be what's like, that? It's let's a get out tub. of the way of that fucking yeah. bathtub rolling it's down that hill. Literally <laughs> just sidestep. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, that all happened back in 2018, and that guy was just now found guilty and sentenced to 20 years behind bars, which does seem pretty fair <laughs> considering he rigged up a house that he no longer legally owned with dozens of booby traps intended to kill anyone who tried to enter it. Luckily, no one got killed because this is, you look, it is a very silly story now, in retrospect, now that no one yeah. was killed. They were hurt, but, you know, it would have been a lot less yeah, fun to talk about if someone would, died. Yeah, if, 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 he, if he'd been more competent, this would not be a fun story. This would be horrifying. Also, he just looks like a crank. He does. Typical crank. Anyways, we've got the headlines half of the show coming right up. But first, it's time to let you know that this episode is sponsored by Athletic Greens. We both take AG1 by Athletic Greens every morning because it's not only the easiest way to make sure you're getting all your daily vitamins, it's also great for keeping that gut nice and healthy and regular. regular. AG1 is just one scoop of powder in water and it tastes great and it makes you feel good. AG1 has all your key health products like multivitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more working together as one. It's made with 75 super high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients that deliver benefits like mood, immune system, and sleep support, sustained energy, and so much more. AG1 is daily nutrition made really simple. With just one scoop, I get the nutrients and gut health support that helps my whole body thrive and covers my nutritional bases. AG1 has quickly become just as important as that first cup of coffee for me. So if you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. You need that vitamin D. I took the uh, travel packs. I have more than five, but I took the travel packs with me on my vacation so Very, I can keep regular yeah, while on the road. You're going to want to stay regular on the road. Uh -huh. So go to athleticgreens.com slash weird. That is athleticgreens.com slash weird. Check it out. This episode is also sponsored by HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. Well, that's why it's America's number one meal kit. This summer, HelloFresh is here to take the work out of eating well. Reach your goals with delicious calorie smart and protein smart lunch and dinner options, plus new vegan recipes too. Get farm to table quality with every HelloFresh box. HelloFresh's seasonal ingredients are picked at peak ripeness and travel from the farm to your doorstep in less than seven days for fresh flavor in every bite. Stuck in a recipe rut? 
Take a bite out of something new with 40 recipes to choose from weekly. With options to please even the pickiest eaters, you'll always find meals everyone at the table will enjoy. We personally love the quick and easy recipes that often just involve one pan. And on this week's menu, they've got the one pan Santa Fe pork tacos with Monterey Jack and cilantro lime slaw. Mm. And the street cart style turkey bowls with yellow rice, white sauce, and pitas. Those both clock in at just 20 minutes, and they're both Hall of Fame recipes that we've been enjoying for years. So go to HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird16 and use code WeeklyWeird16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Again, that's 16 free meals plus free shipping by going to HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird16 and using code WeeklyWeird16. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. All right, now it's time to get into the craziest, weirdest, Wildest headlines from around the world. Elliot, this is a this is a hefty one. I'm going to... Yeah, the culture war continues. Give this one to you. Folks, I regret to inform you. Cracker Barrel has fallen. Folksy Southern food chain becomes latest unlikely target of anti-LGBTQ crusade. Wow. This fucking rules because... So, uh, yeah, Cracker Barrel has uh, gone ahead with their pride plans. Either they seemingly somehow didn't hear about any of this shit and uh, they're getting rude awakening, or they're uh, turning a new leaf, because up until, like, five fucking years ago, like, Cracker Barrel was, like, still dealing with lawsuits for, like, discrimination, like, racial and sexual orientation discrimination. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know what the story is behind there. Also, if you don't know what Cracker Barrel is, it is a uh, roadside Americana experience. I don't think they... Do they even exist in, like... Densely they're, populated areas. They're all or, over. Someone corrected us last time. There is one in Southern California. What? It's out east, but uh, okay. it, it's they're it's, like it's a place you stop on the highway on yeah, a road trip. Yeah, it, it's it's made to look like an old roadside barn eatery yeah. type thing. It has a gift shop inside with old timey Americana they sell gifts. wicker furniture outside. Uh, yes, lots of lots of Christian gifts and stuff. Yeah, in it's there. very. It has a very red state vibe to so it. So it is odd to see what I assume is some Cracker Barrel Pride merchandise, which I would love I to know, own. I want to cop that shit right next to like a quote from the Bible or right. something like that, or a Wooly Willy uh, game. I just and, I, and candy. That's what they they yeah, serve. I'm just so happy every time one of these people's favorite brands uh, succumbs to the woke mind virus, it brings me so much joy because these people just have nothing left to bring them happiness in their lives. It is out of all it's of the... It's so cool. Out of all of... I'm just talking about Cracker Barrel now, but out of all of like the chains that a, a European or someone could uh, you know, check out while they're in America, Cracker Barrel is kind of the right experience. Yeah. You go in there, you get that Southern hospitality. It's mm -hmm. in a fucking wood barn. Yeah. And then you order, uh, you know, the European mind cannot handle this. Oh, a yeah. A chicken fried steak. You're going to want to split all of these. <laughs> You're going to want uh, a steak that is deep fried in batter. Yeah. Go in a large group and order like two items. Uh, do you want gravy on that or should we bring out the whole gravy boat? Right. It's yeah. it, it's a lovely place. Haven't been to one in a long time. but. Um, and on, a, on your way out, get a lollipop the size of your head. But I'm, um, yeah, this is cool. I love it. I want the Cracker Barrel Pride merch. I know. I should I should check to see. It's got to exist, right? I, I would hope so. Their, their announcement for it had, like, a rocking chair in rainbow colors. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Hey. Pretty cool. Yeah. Happy Pride, y'all. <laughs> it, it is for the first time, kind of, maybe since, like, the first time brands started doing this, but for the first time in a while, brands doing and committing to and following through on... Pride stuff this month. It actually means something. Yeah, this which time. is very for odd. the first time in like twenty years. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Anyways, next headline: Utah district bans Bible in elementary and middle schools due to vulgarity and violence. This is always the meme. Yeah. But someone's making the meme real. Um, and yeah, it's like Utah, like many states, has one of those like anyone can complain about any book in the school library, mm -hmm. and they have to by law launch an investigation into it. And, uh, you know, in most cases, even if it doesn't meet the criteria, they're like, well, just to be better safe than sorry, we should just pull it. So someone submitted the King James Bible and they're like, and they, they're like, here, look at this, 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 this citations like, yeah, does that not meet the criteria? And they're like, OK. <laughs> and yeah, of course, the conservatives, they're all losing their fucking minds. This is Utah we're talking about. Oh, yeah. Um, and they're a special brand of conservative. Yeah, movement. I'd like. I wonder if someone was to try this with the Book of Mormon. I wonder if it would have uh, gone differently. But they're they're bash all, your head in with those. They're already stones. so fucking mad, and it's like, 
listen, you wanted this. This is mm -hmm. what you asked for. A woman is in custody after refusing tuberculosis treatment for more than a year. Yep. They got him. Yeah, the Tacoma tuberculosis woman has been caught. I don't know why it took so fucking long to catch her. Mm -hmm. And God, she must be sick if she's been walking around with TB for a year. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they got her. So if you live in Tacoma, that's one less thing to worry about. Uh, especially if you visit the local casinos a lot, because apparently she's been spending a lot of time down there just breathing on all the slot machines. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's good. Um, Case closed. Well, not completely closed, but... Unless uh, she got anyone else sick who is also uh, a fucking moron. Yeah, a nice marker in that chapter of the Weekly Weird book. And I get they're not even, like, criminally charging her, which is interesting. They're just like, you have to... We're holding you in this special fucking room in the jail that we made specifically for you. We're holding you for like a month and a half just until we get this TB situation under they control. Give, do they give her a sunroom like they used to? Uh... They should. Yeah. They don't get much sun up there, though. <laughs> like That's right. Room. That's why the tuberculosis is able to spread so easily. That's right. Because the sun's rays can't cure it from the body. We needed another uh, heat dome in the Pacific Northwest. They had such a great time with that last Oh, well, time. it's coming. El Nino is knocking on the door, baby. Yeah. El Nino! I, it's been a lovely year for us. I love it. I love the gloom because it's so, not raining, but it's nice and cool. So many people on the r slash Los Angeles subreddit are like, where's the sun coming out? I'm like, shut the fuck up! It comes out every day at 4 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> Deal with it. It's good. You get like two hours of sun. And then it's nighttime. Yeah. And it doesn't get hot. Yeah. Keep it that you way. Don't, you do not want what's absolutely coming in like a month and a half. It's, you're going to be complaining then too. your words. Yes. Uh, I like how we're here complaining about our gloom when the Northeast... I'm not complaining. I love the gloom. I'm saying the royal we, all of Los Angeles. Oh, right. Uh, and the Northeast is just... I think actually today it was looking better. Well, that's good. <laughs> stupid Canada. And stupid Blizzard for setting all those fires. Just to promote that game. Yeah, fucked up. A driver's car soared 120 feet after vaulting off of a tow truck's ramp in Georgia. Someone finally did some, the GTA thing. Yeah, this is like some... This is wild. It, it, this is the craziest like body cam footage I've ever seen. It was, you know, one of those trucks with the flatbed uh, tilted yeah. down because there was already a car accident. Like, there's cop cars, ambulances. Like, y you would have known something's happening here. And someone just full speed, not paying attention, drives up the the tow truck's ramp. And, uh, and they it had to be off. going so fast to make yeah. that much. It's like some, it looks like a movie stunt. Yes. The car, like, barrel rolls. Because in real life, cars are very heavy. They are. It's hard to make them fly like that. Yeah, yeah. But they, this person figured it out. And to happen in Georgia, of all places, yeah. did it go? Them Duke, <laughs> them Duke boys are back at it again. Oh, I'm stuck like a possum in a gum bush. <laughs> My car was dancing like a cat on a hot tin roof. You know, and other quotes Et from that show. Yeah, I've never actually seen it. It was filmed here, actually, and not that, in the South at all. Wait, what? Filmed in Santa Clarita, California. Oh, well, that's basically the South. <laughs> yeah, it is the South of L.A. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it's the north, but, uh -huh. you know, mentally. Yes. It's like how Florida's, the, the the more south you go, the more, the less. The more the, north you go, the more yeah, that's right. southern you get. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, anyways, very cool. Very, uh, it's that someone finally did this and there's footage of it. Yeah. Uh, and, they, and they lived. I don't know how fucked up they are. Probably pretty fucked up. It's been they're... a great, uh, like the Orcas, it's been a great year for cars going crazy in dash cam footage. Remember that one that happened here where the truck's tire came off and went in front of the car and the car hit it and oh, flew yeah. like 30 feet in the air and flipped? Yeah, it was it was it was like one of those like video game glitches where your yeah. character just like goes flying. It was And that that one the person was like fine. It was like a, yes. a, a ma marvel of modern automotive engineering. And the also car just, just like bop. <laughs> like not their fault at all, just to complete yeah. it's it, definitely the person in the truck's fault. Uh, but not the person that actually yeah. flew through the air. Tighten those lug nuts. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, North Carolina school system to press charges after students pour cement into toilets in senior prank. They got them. This, I mean, that's not a prank. You're doing property. <laughs> Pouring cement into the, the plumbing? Like, they got to replace all those toilets now. <laughs> Like what? What is it? I don't remember. Not even just the toilets, but uh, like the pipes. They yeah, gotta like tear up the, the floors and yeah, the walls. The plumbing. Yeah, this is such a. I don't even remember my high school having like a senior prank. I think we were like a month earlier, like pretty much told, just like 
Pretty much anything you guys are going to think of is going to result in, like, criminal charges, so just fucking don't. Yeah, uh, um, I graduated shortly after 9-11. The first graduating class after 9-11, so yeah. y- y- jokes weren't Not really... Not in the mood in. for pranks right yes. now. It would only, this would only be better if it came out that the students' uh, parents worked for, like, a plumbing company. It would be funny. Hey, you know, we used to yeah. do pranks in my day. You know what a really funny prank would be? Yeah, you guys should uh, and put one of these business cards on the <laughs> toilet after you do it. Yeah, just write it in with your finger on the concrete. But yeah, it's uh, it's not a prank. I mean, we need to have a national conversation about what a prank is. Yes, we've lost we've lost touch with the word now. It's yeah. changed its meaning. This is this is a crime. You've done a crime. It went from telling someone that the refrigerator's running and they should go catch it to assaulting people and destroying property. Yeah, I mean, like, senior pranks used to be like, oh, no, there's, like, glitter everywhere in the hallway. Huh? Ha-ha. <laughs> or, like, oh, we we trimmed the, the grass to say a funny message or some shit like that. Yeah. We painted the statue pink. Yeah. That one's, like, property damage, but it's, like, you know. Little, Easily A little bit of paint thinner. Yeah, this is, you destroyed the plumbing. Yes, you did. Destroyed. Man gets sued after leaving his blind date and her 23 relatives <laughs> at restaurants. <laughs> it's a hell of a... This is in China. Yeah, this guy gets set up on a blind date and he shows up and uh, she brought the whole family. And he got sued? Uh, well, yeah, because he's like, okay, this is weird, but, you know, maybe you know, maybe that's how his family works. And then the bill shows up and they're all just like... And he's like... Excuse me? Um... Yeah, no problem. It was like $6,000. He's like, I'm just going to go to the bathroom. And then he leaves. And uh, and yeah, the family was very upset. I would love to see their order. 55 burgers, 55 yeah. taters, 55... <laughs> I'm going to do, uh, I think you should leave, quote, every episode. Yeah. Until I get tired of watching the show. It's a great season. A lot, it of, is... a lot of haters, it's a good season. It, Come on. No, it's just like the other seasons where everyone just hates on it for the first couple days. They watch the sketch twice, and they're like, yeah. all right, this is the most brilliant thing I've ever seen. Do a pay-it-forward thing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll catch on. <laughs> <laughs> I just love my favorite part of that sketch, not to get on a tangent, my favorite part of that sketch is when the guy's yelling at him. And yeah. he just oh, I can just goes, run away. No, no, no. He ignores the guy yelling at him and goes, hey, come on, what's going <laughs> on? <up there?" laughs> this guy's trying to start a pay-it-forward scam. What? <laughs> I want 55 burgers, 55 taters. Just watch. I think you should leave you on Netflix. You can watch it all in one sitting. It's the only th- redeeming Netflix show that keeps me subscribed yeah, at this I'm point. Kind of, and kind of shocked they haven't canceled. And that my mom just uses it. She uses the account. Good. But don't tell Ted Sarandos. Texas to deploy buoys to deter Rio Grande crossings, Abbott announces. And this is an idea that Seems like it would be even less effective than building a uh, 600-mile-long uh, mm. wall across the border. This is a bunch of giant balloons connected together well, in the river. The way that I saw the demo online was that the, the, they're giant hard balls that spin when you try to grip them. Yes, yeah, so you just swim under them. Well, I guess. Yeah, I guess you're right. Like, it's, it's floating on top of the you water. You'd assume they'd put a net under, under there or something like that. I don't know. I mean... The, the if, in- if they do, but even then, just bring a knife. Like, cause, but it I don't know. Be a wire net. I don't know if they'd, uh, well, even that, that seems like it would be really bad for like the fucking ecosystem. Well, no, a, that's obviously like, the, the, not the first thought. But uh, yeah, this seems, to Greg Abbott. I don't know, just visually, this seems like a dumb idea. Also, just like go out with some fucking bolt cutters and cut the pieces together. Oh no. Yes, anything is going to be. It just doesn't seem very effective. Yeah, uh, but also the images, like the far away images of it, really make it look like a wipeout. Uh, yeah, course, all the balls you're bouncing across. across the top of yeah, it. Yeah, it's that, and it's also just fucking hideous. It's like the yeah, Rio Grande ugly. is a natural. It's 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 a body of water that is now going to look like shit. Yes, for something that I don't think is going to work as well as they seem to think it is, costing the people of Texas, God knows how much money, thwarted by the humble trebuchet. <laughs> Zoe the Lab Mix breaks records for longest tongue on a living dog, and it's longer than a soda can. And look at this, but that is a, that thing is thangin'. <laughs> Good lord. Uh, I just love our units of measurement here in the United States. Longer than a soda can. Oh, okay, I can, that makes sense. Yeah. It's about as long as, you know, one one thousandth of a football field. Yeah. <laughs> one and a half baseballs. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh... 
The American mind is truly something to behold. It's about a little bit longer than a, a Narcan shot. Because if you don't define it by easily referenced terms, then someone will be like, well, my, tog my dog's tongue's longer than that. I mean, this is how measurements, how our imperial system came to be. It's like, oh, it's, uh, that's a, a foot. foot. But yeah, if we were making our new measurements today, it'd be like, that's about like eight sodas and, uh, and two Reese's. I'm driving to San Diego. It's and about one Skittle. Uh, it's about two thousand football fields. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's a long, long tongue. I bet that dog. I bet. I bet when it sees a, a sexy lady, the tongue tongue goes out real far. Yeah. A woo guy. It just flops out on the table. Rolls out like, yeah. a, like, like a carpet. <laughs> we need to diversify our references here soon. Yeah. No. It's the old <laughs> cartoons. All the cartoons referenced in the movie The Mask are the only cartoons you really need. Yeah, they really did it all, didn't they, folks? Uh, le final headline. Secret Service agents didn't see an intruder get into a Biden official's home because they were distracted on their cell phones. Yeah. This, uh, Marvel this, Snap. It's a hell of a game. I didn't know that all the Biden officials get, like, Secret Service protection. I guess it makes sense. But, yeah, this guy, I don't know who he is. But, uh, yeah, some drunk dude got into his house, just walked right in. And he managed to talk the guy out of it, but then he came out and he's like, what the fuck? And they're like, oh, did something happen? They're like, yeah, a man just fucking walked into my house. And they're like, oh, sorry, I was on a candy crush streak. You got to understand. You know how those things are. The Secret Service, uh, they are long overdue for a, a serious audit. Because, like, they've, they've been they've fucking, been up, fucking a up a lot. Like, going back to, like, the Obama, uh, the craziest one was, like, they when Obama, like, went to, like, I think it was Mexico or maybe somewhere in South America. Like, like twenty of them just like just got just, wasted when on vacation. Yeah, they got like a bunch of prostitutes and mm -hmm. shit doing blow. Yeah, they're having a great time. It's like, I'm sure it was fun. You're supposed to protect the president. <laughs> what are you doing? Whoo! Anyway, oh god, we passed the hour mark again. We oh did it. Well. We did it, folks. Hopefully, back down to normal next week. Don't forget to like the video. Click the like button. Come on, let's see those thumbs. It going gets up. the it gets the confetti going. You feel good about yourself. We we feel good about you. Leave a comment. Sometimes I'm in the comment section replying to people. You'll see me pop up every once in a while. <laughs> I'm watching you. Yeah. Uh, and you should be watching us. Watch our other videos from this week. We got an episode about aliens. And VR headsets from Apple. And we talked about how Livy just rizzed up Baby Gronk. That's Is right. Baby Gronk the new drip king? I'm starting to come around on the fact that he might be, and we might have to yeah. suffer under another monarchy. Meet your new drip king. Yes. Baby Gronk. Baby Watch Gronk, 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 Baby Gronk, 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 Baby Gronk, 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 Baby Gronk. Riz him up, 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 up. Please watch our other videos if you haven't already. Give a like to this one. Make sure you're subscribed. Leave a comment, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.